So let's get into what I plan to read in 2019. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment. You know, girl, what have you, what did you read last year? What are you planning to read next year? If you ain't got nothing to say but what's already been said, leave an emoji. Thumb, just put a thumbs up emoji. Put a heart. Put something. Engage. It helps It helps the sister out. I keep wanting to say hope. But I don't know. Yes, I am going to read uh, Becoming by Michelle Obama. I don't know if I'm finna go to none of her events because, uh, uh, who, who's sponsoring me? Them tickets is expensive and they sell out so quickly. Give me a ticket. Give me a press pass. Be a sister. My goal, though, is to eat dinner with the Obamas. It's going to happen in the next maybe two, three years it might take. But I'm getting invited to an Obama something. All right? So we're going to read this. It's on my to-do list for 2019. Currently, I'm reading Anti-Feminist, which I've owned since last year. And I'm about done. I have like two, three more chapters left. Really good book on African-American men speak out on fatherhood, friendship, forgiveness, and freedom. One, girl, I could do a whole book about how this shit reaffirms how I feel about being a single black woman. I'm not pressed. And I think the, the easiest way to try and criticize and attack a person, particularly black women, is to talk about our relationships. But all that shows is your limited range. When your knee jerk reaction is to want to criticize why someone ain't got a man. Who said I needed one? Do you don't even know how I view intimate relationships and partnerships and marriage. Ain't never publicly said it to y'all because it ain't none of y'all's business. But I might because of the lack of representation that we have around the ways in which I particularly think I want to enter into a relationship. Um, I might one day discuss it with y'all. Maybe. But this book definitely, be, and it, she basically interviews and uses narrative. One, okay, let me backtrack. Let me, let me take a step back here. What I enjoy about this book, one, is as someone who's looking to pursue a PhD in history, in the ways that she uses narratives to, as a qualitative study. I didn't know that you could do that. Literally, I think, you know, a lot of what my reading has helped me both from Kill All Normies and like other philosophy books that I've read is that, you know, I'm reminding myself that we do really all have different entry points, right? And that literally there's things that we might take for granted as like, oh, oh, everyone should know that or basic information. And literally we don't know because no one's ever said it to us. And we, and we absorb so many insecurities, particularly around education and our own intelligence, particularly as black women, that we are hesitant to like assert ourselves in certain arenas and I literally didn't know that you could take a narrative that you can use narrative to create a qualitative study but that's what uh I'm assuming this is a woman's era net mm -hmm. okay yeah marriage is labor for black women that is often not reciprocated equally you know reciprocity if sexual relationships were deprioritized as the basis for our most meaningful social ties then one who related to then one who you related to sexually might come to be of less pervasive social significance heterosexuality would then lose its privilege and non-sexual friendships would no longer be regarded as intrinsically less significant than sexual ones i have been talking about this for so long about friendships matter and we as black women get talked to so much about our intimate partners that we tend to turn our nose up about what the benefits of friendships could be i really hate this this ethos that your sniffing at others should be your best friend and that people will like this whole message about particularly we see on instagram between or social media in general would like influence our couples and they're basically just up each other's ass the whole time and you're like that's not healthy it takes a community to raise children it's just not about a two-parent household i'm not wrong either she addresses that in this book it's good i'm not gonna veer too much off because i'm about done but this is gonna be a 2019 read and it's going to play mm-hmm it just is helping it's it's like wow and even just understanding that being in a relationship with a feminist is more work and it, she right she she called that ish out because you are constantly renegotiating and reassessing and always doing the work to be better people in your relationship mm -hmm. don't be ashamed sis don't be ashamed i'm not <laughs> How We Get Free, um, Black Feminism and the Kamba He, the Come He River Collective. You know, secondary reading for Some of Us Are Brave. So we're gonna read that. Foundational Black his Feminist History. 
Too Heavy A Load by Deborah Cray Gray White. This is like, yeah, so this is um, with regards to me applying for my PhD, Foundational Black Woman History, about too heavy a load, a Black Women in Defense of Themselves from 1894 to 1994 by Deborah Gray Wright. We'll definitely be reading that. Started this because everybody be quoting this book. A Voice from the South, Anna Julia Cooper. I was out with somebody earlier today, couldn't remember the child's name. She, she's not a child, she's a hero. But I could not remember um, old girl's name. And so many people like, like quote her in passing. And this is like foundational black feminist theory. Like this is the OG, the GOAT. But this book is, you see how little it is? This is not an easy read. I really feel like the ways in which we tend to talk about our knowledge and history really does a disservice to spreading our knowledge and history, which is why I'm undertaking reading these books that are a little bit more, that are acknowlededly difficult for me to get through. The language in this, one, besides it being archaic, she you could tell she studied Latin because she uses a lot of non-English words. And so, girl, I just be circling words and looking them up as I read them and then going back and doing a summary. I ain't even got, I've done had this book for a whole six months and I've gotten through 20 pages of it and there's a lot of question marks and there's a lot of words underlined and notes because I'm gonna get it I'm, I am going to get it a, a, raison d'entre, a reason for being I had like I'm googling French and ish and you know a lot of I mean I read a chapter or maybe two it's centered around the, the religion and the black church and so there, there are critiques and thoughts to be had it, it starts with a bit of like xenophobia towards the orientals and the muslims and i'm just like oh okay but we're gonna get through it we're gonna read this because this needs to be read i can't be talking about black women history and not read this so we finna finish it it's go we're going to get it done once we finish aranette i think i'm gonna finish this and then probably read this while i read too heavy alone because i don't have a problem reading history books so I got the, I didn't think the book was going to be this big. I didn't know. I just clicked on Amazon because I was like, you know, I really like Zora. I do. I'll be wanting to quote Zora all the time, but I have not really read. I've read her works, but I have not read works on her. And I think, you know, what's fascinating to me about her was her her commitment to poor black people and to the culture of black people, particularly Southern black people, you know, um, as a lover of history, I can say that I appreciate the history of Zeta Phi Beta. I do, I appreciate it. I'm definitely a Delta. I'm definitely glad I made that decision. You know, no shade, no tea. But uh, Zora was an early member of Zeta Phi Beta um, at Howard University. And I bring that up though, because I, chose the sorority that I chose after doing very thorough research on the history. And I think one of the parts of the history of the early sororities and as the AKAs and the Deltas is that we do have to acknowledge that both organizations went through a period of either steeply imbued colorism and for the Deltas more so a classism about not allowing daughters of farmers um, in. And I think even we have to even talk about that in the history of HBCUs, the way that education and the way that the NAACP and the, the front facing liberation movement. Um, ooh, my battery done died again. But yeah, the front facing liberation movement and the, the ways that in which respectability politics has always come into play. And we've always, we've we've consistently gone through these evolutions where we like turn our nose up, somebody comes in and reminds you no. You know, the, uh, oh, what's the quote that I put up on Smart Brown Girl from her? Because she really kind of just, she really stuck her middle finger up to the, the bougie literati of the Harlem Renaissance era. Um, and you know, she sacrificed a lot. And unfortunately she died poor. And you know, my dad's side of the family is from Polk County, Florida. And she wrote, like she wrote a play called Polk County, which I think is how I originally found out about her. And then she was on Oprah's book club for Their Eyes Are Watching God. Yes. So with all that said, I was like realizing, you know, I like I quote her all the time. I reference her work. I love her work, but I haven't read all of her essays. And I think there's all a lot of the quotes that we that we use of hers are actually pulled from letters that she wrote to other people. Girl, clearly a prolific letter writer. I mean, wasn't no Twitter DMs popping back in 1920, whatever. But did you know that like she when she went to 
she lied about her age so that she could go back and graduate from high school and then go to college. I think she graduated from college when she was like in her 30s, her late 30s. You know, just an amazing woman who really lived her own story. So all that to say, I'm not going to read this all at once. This is this might take a couple years to get through, but I wanted to read more about her. So I got this book, a collection of her letters. Um, there, there isn't, I don't know if there's a history book written by, about her by a black woman. There is one written by uh, a white man. And then I said I was gonna get this and then read most of her essays and then get secondary writing about her after that. So, you know, to start delve into it a little bit more because I think it's great to quote someone, but why are we quoting them? Like, what is really their life story? What really happened and who was this person? And so that's what I wanted to do more of. Um, I, don't, I don't know exactly how I'm gonna attack this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into it. I also, I got her reader and I also got James Baldwin's reader for their essays. So these, this is full of mostly the other books that I didn't read because I wanted to read Dust Tracks on a Road. And so I was like, I can get the book or why don't I just get the, the reader and so that I have the collection and I can kind of go through that more again. So here we are. Also, Joe Morgan, who uh, one of my favorite black feminist theory books, uh, Ooh, I would say One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. That is not the title of the book, girl. Wrong, ain't even in the same sector. Saw that shit on Broadway, shout out to Tom Hanks. Uh, not Tom Hanks, Lieutenant Dan was in the Broadway version of that. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is by that white boy, girl, whatever, I, you know, I saw the movie too. Uh, <laughs> when Chicken Heads Go Home to Roost. Why do I say One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Because when Chicken Heads Go Home to Roost, how do these references happen in my mind? What is happening here? I loved When Chicken Heads Go Head to Roost. That really was a foundation of like my bl black feminist awakening. That really was a foundation of like my black feminist awakening. Like how do I, as a lover of hip hop, as a lover now of trap music and city girls, period, reconcile that with the black feminism that I happen to, that I absolutely believe in, right? And that, um, you know, I have some problematic faves. How do we deal with this, especially with the more traditional forms of the general feminist theory and like Marxist feminism and, you know, white women feminism. So Joan Morgan brought me into that. So when she really, I, you know, I'm gonna just read this. I'm gonna just read it because it's Joan Morgan. I liked her other work, so I'm gonna read this. It don't seem like it's that long. And the miseducation of Lauren Hill, girl, I was in the like what, sixth or seventh grade? Maybe I was in fifth grade when that came out. I was young enough that I was still recording things on tape players. Was Zion my ringtone? You know, not my ringtone, my voicemail. <laughs> that I learned the word reciprocity <laughs> from Miss Education of Lauryn Hill. That was a life-changing album. Looking for Lorraine, so yeah, again, people that I tend to reference, particularly black women, I do wanna read more historical writings about them. Also, because I'm applying for my PhD in history, I should be understanding how people write history and how they organize their, their words and their, their thoughts and their theories. So, um, this is by Imani Perry. She is, I'm, I, I see her on Twitter. People say she's popping, so I'm gonna take their word for it. Um, last two books, so this got water all over it. I, I've read like a little bit of it. This book is I've had for a while. It's about the revolution will not be funded. Again, I have a homeboy who is getting his PhD in cultural anthropology, shout out to Drake. He is at Harvard. Um, and you know, with my audience and the sort of liberal and the sort of liberation theory that I do kind of sprinkle in here and there, and he watches my stuff and he's been like sending me articles. I'm currently, why can I never remember the title of the book about black pornography workers, black sex workers. Um, it's called A Taste of Brown Sugar or something. It's on my it's on my phone and my phone's, I don't feel like getting up again, girl, sorry. I'll, I'll have a link for it down below. PDF, he sent me a couple PDFs. He's been working with me on my understanding of what is neoliberalism, what is capitalism, how we need to fight against a carceral state, um, Marxist readings, you know, all that. And so this was a book that he definitely recommended. Um, part of me kind of being a, like a kind of activist in the space that I live in on YouTube and understanding in how when I take opportunities to amplify voices and to amplify causes, 
how to think about how I go about that. And I, what I appreciate about it, the little bit that I had read about this book is it doesn't suggest that it's going to give you an answer. It really is just encouraging you to think a little bit deeper and to be more self-aware about how we can feed into capitalism even within trying to do activism. Um, and that when companies come in and help you and fund you, how to not lose sight of the community that you are invested in. So I had a little leak in my apartment and this book got wet, but we gonna finish reading. We done, we read the first two chapters. Um, and it's good, it's just really small font. It's a lot of words on the page, so it's gonna take me some time. A lot of heavy reading this year. Um, I follow Naimaism. I hit her up about helping me get this book club launch. We're going to see where that goes. But she had been talking about this book, Alabama and Africa. Again, really, she loves books with small letters on a page. She loves Fred Moten, complicated readings. Um, but this is about Booker T. Washington, the German Empire, and the globalization of the New South. It's about a Tuskegee um, expedition that was in Togo in the early 1900s. And sort of, you know, this kind of looping of impacts of how globalization and colonization and how we can all do harm to each other with our, how we put our ideologies into praxis. Okay, you know, like that? So uh, we gonna get to this maybe, but I bought it. I don't know if I'm gonna actually be able to read this in 2019 but I purchased it, I will absolutely skim it. I'll at least read the first chapter. A lot of small words, a lot of small words on the page. But I like to read, so that's my list for right now. I also, um, I am, again, how many times am I gonna say, I'm, I'm working towards actually factually putting in an application for the PhD that I would like to pursue this fall. And so a lot of my reading this year is going to be a lot more broader historical readings. And I have a list of books that I need to go. I'm gonna try and use my library card a little bit more, but I like to highlight and take notes in my books. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, but I'm gonna be doing a lot of reading this year, a lot of heavy, dense reading that I don't necessarily encourage my audience to read. But with that in mind, I am, I am, yes, I say this every year, we're working on the book club, we are, we are. Girl, it's, uh, there's so many semantics that I can't even get into on video. And it's unfortunate because I would love for y'all to understand why I keep saying I'm gonna do things and they don't seem to come to fruition. But um, just know I'm working on it. That's all I can say right now, all right? I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful. There will be links down below in the description box. I will also have a evergreen list posted on my Julesy.com blog. We're trying to do more blogging this year as well. Do a little bit more writing. Get our thoughts out into the world a little bit more. Um, but of course, I would love to know what you're reading. Do you have any recommendations for fiction? Because what also helps me to get through these more denser books is when I do read more lighthearted fiction lists. And my past two book lists from 2017 and from the beginning of 2018 last year do feature a lot easier to read fiction-based black African diaspora books that I definitely suggest you go read, all right? So let me know in the comments down below. One, have I ever given you a recommendation that was really, really good? Let me know which one it was. And two, what are you currently reading and what would you recommend that I read? All right? Thanks for watching. Deuces!